very much. It's very exciting. Uh, our first question is going to go to uh, Mr. Spigman. You have uh, seven minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, General Whitecross, Admiral Bennett. Thank you both for your service, for your leadership, for being here today, and most importantly, for engaging on this very, very Im important topic. Um, I want to put to you the idea that investigation, discipline, and victim support are tremendously important components of the project overall, um, but they are what we might consider the, the downstream components that happen when something bad has occurred. So you mentioned culture change, and uh, about an hour ago I had the opportunity to introduce my private member's bill in the House of Commons, and it's an act to create Gender Equality Week in Canada. And it's a bill for which I'm looking to feedback and also ultimately support from the Canadian Forces as it goes forward. But I'm wondering if you could take the lens of gender equality, which is something maybe more diffuse, but certainly upstream of sexual misconduct and sexual violence, and illuminate the committee and, and uh, Canada as a nation a little bit on the culture that is currently in place in the Canadian forces that we need to change, the subtleties that would facilitate sexual misconduct, sexual violence, uh, and ultimately all the things that we report on and, and try to correct. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm um, going to do some of the answers of the questions and then I'll defer to Jennifer Bennett, who is uh, working the issues on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I'd like to say, first of all, that uh, a week... Um, as you've so uh, illustrated or characterized, uh, would certainly be supported by the Canadian Armed Forces. Um, the General Vance has made it one of his priorities, besides Operation Honours, also to increase the diversity numbers within the Canadian Armed right. Forces, and that is certainly one of my objectives as well. And in so doing, um, we're, we're talking about cultural change, which will take a generation or more, as you can, uh, as you can appreciate. Uh, in addition to that, what we're trying to do in the short term, you, as you've alluded to, is, is, is bring out the behavioral change. Behavioral change in the short term will lead to cultural change in the long term. But institutionally, we must create the environment uh, where culture change and behavioral change will be uh, sustaining and enduring, which speaks to policies, training, education, uh, and uh, a marked change uh, in probably how we treat people um, when it comes to uh, men and women, people of different sexual orientations and different cultures, actually, if we can put it to that extent. Um, so the work we're doing on the institutional side, which is very much process-driven, which is very much um, going to create that environment, is ongoing, and uh, Admiral Bennett could actually speak a little bit more on that. I would like to also uh, mention that gender-based analysis has to be a part of our processes as we're moving forward. And General Vance has identified, Major General, uh, Tammy Harris as the gender-based analysis um, um, champion for the Canadian Armed Forces. And we're taking the lead on that to look at our policies to ensure that there is no gender bias in our policies as we're moving forward, and that we're looking at them in a very constructed uh, or a structured and uh, pragmatic way. Uh, so putting that all together, that will help to bring us to a sustained uh, our, our belief is that will help bring us to a sustained cultural change. Uh, and much of that has already been started. Uh, Jen, General, you... before we hear from Admiral yeah. Bennett, is it fair to say that aside from the policies, which, which are very much going in the right direction as I see it, um, there isn't at the moment among our serving women and men a presumption of gender equality across functions in the Canadian Forces? That's still not something that's culturally established? Or, yes. or is, is that too general a statement? I think that's too general a statement, uh, Mr. Chair, and I, I certainly on my own personal opinion, uh, I, I believe that I am being treated, I get treated uh, as a peer based on my rank and my experience and background level. Um, I l would like to think uh, that that is the case for all, but I'm not naive enough to believe that. Okay. Uh, so I believe we do have work to do there. Okay. Admiral Bennett, would you like to comment as well? If I could address your, your last question first, I think there's a difference between gender equality and equity. Uh, and while we don't have the same balance of uh, male members of the Canadian Armed Forces and female members, there there are some differences in why people choose to join the Canadian Armed Forces. There is a propensity to join factor. And we share that challenge across a number of occupations that have been traditionally male-dominated. I would also add that we do have pay parity uh, benefit. We do have a number of, uh, of our programs that are exactly the same for men and women, which is not the case across other occupations. So it is difficult to uh, answer the question about gender equality if you're simply just looking at numbers there. Certainly our programs uh, and the way that we treat individuals is very gender neutral. Okay. Even our physical fitness standards now, we've gone 
to one standard for all so that it, it uh, uh, applies to members of the Canadian Armed Forces to ensure that we are fit for operations. There are no different standards for men than there are for women. Okay. Uh, in terms of the, the cultural change and with your specific reference to gender considerations, Operation Honour is, uh, touches on a number of other large projects across the department. General Whitecross mentioned diversity. Uh, we continue to work on our uh, ethics and ethos, our programs of leadership, uh, gender considerations on operations as part of the UN security resolution and the NATO work. So we are engaged across a number of initiatives that are gender related and I'm excited as well to hear about the opportunity to be able to celebrate uh, Gender Equality Week and the role that we can play in that. Thank you for that. Mr. Chair, do I have time left? Yeah, you've got about a minute uh, 15. Uh, very briefly perhaps, um, just to look at two separate stages in the, in the process of entering and serving in the Canadian Forces. What messaging with respect to gender equality uh, is taking place at the recruitment stage and in our military colleges? I know that doesn't leave a lot of time, but if you could just briefly address, maybe we can circle back to it. So, um, whether it's recruiting or f two two parts to that question. One, we're trying to increase our diversity numbers. That is one of our ultimate aims in the next number of years. And the CDS has made one percent per year for the next ten years to be our stated aim, so that we can make our uh, um, target numbers from the uh, Human um, Human Resources Canada up to twenty five percent in the next decade. In order to do that, uh, we are creating the environment at the recruiting centers before they even get to the military colleges and the recruit school in Saint-Jean. We're creating the environment where we're trying to get more, engage more women, specifically women, but also uh, people of visible minorities uh, and our Aboriginal colleagues, uh, to engage them more, to, uh, uh, to tell them of the benefits that, it, that exist within the Canadian Armed Forces, uh, and to expand upon them, because we found in our public opinion research that women generally don't understand what it means to be a military member, and to do a far more education uh, at the grassroots level. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks very much.